Crowfoot was a fierce warrior, but as a leader, you got to know when to be a warrior. You got to know when to be a diplomat. You got to know what's the best for your people. You got to know how, you know, it's going to affect not just this generation, but two, three, four, seven generations from now. I'm Chief Ori Crowfoot, the current chief of Sixty Guy. Behind me is uh, my great, great, great grandfather, Chief Crowfoot. The Blackfoot people have been in this area for tens of thousands of years. So I've had a long line of chiefs in my family. If you look at the traditional territory of the Blackfoot people, it was a vast land. We have the second largest reserve in Canada from a land base perspective. So from our people being able to roam all the way north of Edmonton, all the way down to um, the Yellowstone Park in, in, in the States. Now imagine 15, 20 years before the signing of the Blackfoot Treaty, there was very few non-native people in this area. You know, now you start seeing Fort Calgary come up. You start seeing the buffalo numbers dwindle down. And you start seeing the smallpox and, um, and your people are just, are dying. And your people are starving because you don't have the same food base you, you once had. And you have to make dr drastic decisions. Crowfoot at that time had, had befriended some of the newcomers and he knew that they weren't gonna stop coming. He knew the best way for his people, for the future of his people, was to form a treaty with these newcomers. Crowfoot made a lot of concessions and a lot of uh, hard decisions in negotiating in treaty number seven but they were decisions that he thought would benefit his people for many generations to come. The, the way the Blackfoot looked at that treaty was a, a, sometimes a different way that the non-natives looked at that treaty. We look, didn't look at it word for word, we looked at it as the spirit and intent of how that treaty was made. It was a working together relationship, not a surrender, not a giving up, not a, um, you know, a, a land grab or anything like that. It was a working together. It was like, you know, we agree to, you know, work with you guys on certain things. Canada would not be the country it is today if it wasn't for the rich history of people like Chief Crowfoot and the Blackfoot Nation. Uh, Chief Crowfoot actually was inducted into the uh, Railroad Hall of Fame because of his acts and his deeds that helped the railroad go from coast to coast uh, across Canada. A lot of people don't know that. If it wasn't for the Blackfoot Treaty, uh, commonly known today as Treaty Number no. 7 that was signed in 1877, the railroad might not have went all the way across to the uh, west coast. One of the steps that can go towards recognition, reconciliation, would be putting a Chief Crowfoot on a $5 bill. A lot of times we acknowledge our, um, our for founding fathers and stuff like that, you know. Um, but, like I'm saying, Chief Crowfoot is a founding father, in my opinion, you know. What would Canada be like if it wasn't for that Blackfoot Treaty? We'll never know. Luckily, we'll never know. So, I, I think most Canadians don't realize the ancient history that's here in the country that they think is only a couple of hundred years old. When I look around in our council chambers, and I look around our nation, I see reminders of my ancestors. I see reminders of Crowfoot. I see reminders of, um, of the sacrifices that were made for our people today. It's time now for Canada to start recognizing the great uh, sacrifices, the great importance that um, indigenous people, indigenous leaders such as Chief Crowfoot has done for Canada and North America.